Hello to the uh, final uh, session. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Of pathophysiology of uh, left to right chant. We talked about the common ones, the VSD, the PDA, the ASD. And there are the uncommon ones. Again, with this left to right shunt, quote unquote, we call them the arteriovenous shunts. One big portion of them is systemic arteries to systemic veins um, shunts. Uh, what do you mean by that? There could be a variable variety of uh, such uh, shunts. I'm just going to take away the name and put for you uh, the drawing. If we have the aorta like that, and this is the systemic artery, any connection between this aorta or its components that derive blood from it, these are the coronaries, to a vein or a venous chamber is called a systemic arteriovenous shunt or an arteriovenous shunt. So you can imagine if we go down from the start, you can have coronary fistulas. A coronary artery may send an abnormal branch towards the apex of the right ventricle. And that would be a coronary fistula. Or the left coronary may actually send a very abnormal branch to the right atrium. We call it again a coronary fistula. Arteriovenous shunts, fistula wise, they act exactly or almost exactly like a PDA, but because most of the time they have restriction of flow just at the end where they enter the chamber or the vein they go to. They do not present exactly like the PDA. They do have a left to right shunt. So the pulmonary blood flow through the venous flow that's being received plus the shunt will increase. The left atrium flow will be increased. The left ventricle flow will be increased. We will have left ventricle, left atrial uh, dilatation if the shunt is significant. We will have increased pulmonary blood flow and it is extremely rare in these areas because of the length of these arteries, because of the restriction, because of the amount of blood, it is extremely rare that this, these arteries cause uh, pulmonary hypertension. On the contrary, because these arteries have the similar pathophysiology of a PDA, they do steal from the original vessel they're coming from. So they can steal from the coronary, co causing coronary ischemia, which is a pathophysiological effect that we could see in coronary fistulas, and so on. This is one example. The arteries could come from different areas. If this is the brachiocephalic artery, this is the right common carotid, this is the subclavian, we do have here the rima, the right internal Memory, ar uh, memory artery. Such arteries are known to give arteriovenous collaterals, arteriovenous fistulae, and they can go anywhere. You can, may have an artery from here even to the hepatic. So any branch or uh, any branch from the aorta can give an abnormal fistulous connection, arteriovenous connection from an artery to a vein down to the furthest uh, uh, branch, uh, whether it's uh, the celiac, whether it's the um, uh, superior mesenteric, uh, whether it's the iliacs, all are a place for an arteriovenous fistula to happen congenitally or iatrogenically, iatrogenically uh, if uh, there was an involved injury or surgery or accidents that can lead to those. As I said, they are all 
left to right shunt. They have the characteristics of left to right shunt. Plus, the most common characteristic they have is actually stealing from the systemic circulation. Patients will be pink, rare to cause heart failure, but can cause cardiac ischemia, or organ ischemia depend on where that artery is uh, close to. So if it's close to the celiac trunk, you may have even up to hepatic uh, uh, ischemia. Okay, because of the steel pattern. I'm not going to spend more time in there because these are rare conditions and they, if we want to explain them, we need sessions specific for them. Our second arteriovenous shunt, which, which we almost always um, uh, believe it's uh, supposed to be left to right. Here's a systemic, we covered it already. Pulmonary arteries can have fistulae or arteriovenous shunt. What is the artery in the pulmonary artery? It is either the main pulmonary artery or the branches, nothing else. And it's usually the branches. The main pulmonary artery is extremely rare to give additional uh, vessels other than the branch pulmonary arteries. So if a pulmonary artery is going to become fistula, where is the vein that it should send to? Obviously, the vein that it's, it sends to is the pulmonary vein. So basically, an artery from the branch pulmonary arteries by bypasses the arteriolar, alveolar, venular, venous, normal channel by an extra outside vessel that connects di directly the artery to the vein and hence steals the blood from the pulmonary artery directly to the pulmonary vein. So we call it an artery, but it carries blue blood, deoxygenated blood. So these patients, although they have an artery to vein shunt, but actually it is a right to left shunt. It's from the venous side to the venous pulmonary side to the venous, uh, sorry, the pulmonary arterial side which carries venous blood to the pulmonary veins which should carry oxygenated blood but in this case it's going to receive uh, the blue blood and hence these patients may look blue, they don't have murmurs and which side here will be dilated again? It will be again the left side which is the left atrium, the right, uh, sorry, the left ventricle, because they are the ones receiving the extra flow. So, and this is a very unique condition where the patient is actually blue, but the left side is dilated. It's almost unique to this, uh, to this disease. We are used to patients who are pink with the left side dilated in left to right shunts or arterial to venous shunt, but the pulmonary arterial venous shunt is different because the pulmonary artery does not carry oxygenated blood. The other different example to left to right shunt, as I said, almost always left to right shunt causes LA, LV dilatation. If I have an aneurysm or an arteriovenous malformation in the brain, like vein of gallon aneurysm, one common example, the shunt is from abnormal arteries in the brain to the venous side directly without going through the usual arteriolar, venule, capillary, venular area. So it's just bypassing and that's why it's called a fistula or a shunt. And in this case, which side is actually ejecting the blood? It's the artery, which, is, which carries pink blood or oxygenated blood, and which is the side that's receiving this extra blood is actually the venous side. So in these patients, the receiving area is the big veins. So you will find that they have large internal jugular veins, large dilated superior vena cava veins. And obviously, because all of that venous reception is happening in diastole on the right side, they will have also large right atrium, large right ventricle, 
and they will be in severe heart failure, sometimes even intractable heart failure. So although it's a left to right chunt, although the patient is quite pink, but it's the right side that suffers because it's in the area of the brain and the shunt is being received by the uh, superior vena cava eventually. Uh, by this, uh, I think I uh, have covered in a decent uh, way, I hope, uh, the pathophysiology of left to right shunt, whether the common and, and the uncommon. And uh, I do advise you uh, to still uh, read more and uh, follow the two rules follow the blood where it, where it goes and each chamber, what effect it can do uh, in it or on it. And always remember that the chamber that dilates is the chamber the, that receives eventually the extra cardiac output. And always remember that flow follows the least resistant area, the lower pressure and the more uh, compliant. Thank you so much.